All right. Hi, everyone. Afternoon. Hi. Welcome. How are you all? Welcome to our webinar, Focus 8 to 10. Exactly. So both myself and Sophia are currently in Bologna. Where are you guys? Tell us, what are you, what are you doing in the next few days? What are you doing, Sophia? Uh, so what am I doing at home? I am, well, I'm working at home, which is yeah. always nice. And I am reading, um, I'm reading my book. I am working, I'm doing my lessons. I'm working on some translations as well. There's oh, nothing, nice. nothing better than staying at home for working on a translation. You have all the time. <laughs> You can sure. sit down, you can concentrate. And Is it a technical can... translation? No, it's a, um, it's a novel, actually. It's a book. It's oh, a story nice. which I'm translating. And, uh, really cool. Yeah, it's um, usually when I translate, uh, when I have to go to work, when I have to translate, it's usually just in the evening, me desperately trying to <laughs> write something. But now I, I, I have my cup of tea, I have my laptop, <laughs> I have my music. And I can work for hours with no problem. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Hey, Cinzia. Hello, Hi, hello. Cinzia, welcome. Nice to see you. Very nice um, to see you. I'm very happy um, about that. What um, about um, Alex? What are you doing at home in these few days? Yesterday, I started a little course on coding. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of... Um, Strange. I saw um, my computer basically do a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> you type in some commands, and then everything starts to come and everything out. Everything changes. Well, yeah, um, it's strange. I, I managed to create a folder and um, and a text document just from command lines rather than normal normal things. Okay, nice. Just at and the beginning. Which, um, are you using a particular website or a particular online? Yes, um, I am. So Is this one of those Udemy courses? It's not Udemy. I found, um, basically, it's a free site. Okay. The project is called The Odin Project. Okay, nice. It's a bit strange. Yeah. It has the, a picture of Odin on there. And um, they've got a lot of resources for you to become a web developer. Nice. So both um, front end and back end. Nice. So you're using this time to educate yourself and to learn something new, which is always really <laughs> or try, nice. try. It's always really nice, though. Like you've got um, all this time, you can really dedicate yourself to something that you you want to learn or to do. Uh, Elisa exactly. says hi, teachers. Hi, Elisa. Thank hi, you Elisa. for joining us. What are you doing in these days, Elisa? What are you doing as well, Cynthia? Yeah. And we I'm also have. Michaela says, I'm Michaela and I live in Bustar City on Ivarez and Milan. Nice, Michaela. Nice. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Maybe I Please. see that we have um, some students who are not um, not our students, Alex. So maybe we should introduce ourselves. Sure, sure. So my name is Alex. I come from England, um, in the southwest of England, in the countryside. And I I live in Bologna. I've lived in Bologna for the last five years now and I'm I'm pretty happy here. <laughs> nice. How about Good you job. Sophia? Well my name is Sophia, I come from London but for the last four, four and a half years I've lived in Bologna. I work at uh, my English school in Bologna Mille and I have worked there for almost two years and I am 28 years old, almost 29 in a couple of weeks. Um, my Exciting. Friend, Marina from Rome. Hi, Marina. Thank you very Hi, much Marina. for joining us today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, so let us know in the comments, what are you doing at home in these days? What activities are you doing to keep yourselves exactly. busy, to pass the time? Are you um, rediscovering some old hobbies from your past? Or like Alex, are you learning something new? Um, it's a uh, it's a lovely opportunity. Now you have time to do things that you usually wouldn't have time to do. Exactly, exactly. Oh, Cinzia says yeah. that she is. 
I'm cleaning, cleaning her my house. house and throwing unnecessary stuff. Where are you throwing unnecessary stuff, Chinzi? Are you just throwing it like around <laughs> the house, just kind of throwing it around? Or throwing. are you throwing it out, okay? Throwing it exactly. out or throwing it away, all right? Exactly. Use a composition throw. with this. Throw out away. or throw away. So when you put it in the rubbish. And she's um, studying English. And she's studying English. Very, well very done. good. That always makes us happy to hear. Hi, Hi to Robbie. Nice well, to see you. Maria uh, said that she is studying, cooking, watching TV series and reading books. That's fantastic. That's very good. Um, let us know, uh, Marina, what uh, what TV series are you watching? What books are you reading? What genres? What are you cooking as well? Exactly. What genres, what categories do you like? Um, Robbie, hi, tell us, where are you from? Um, and what good are job, you doing Maria. in these days? Exactly. Yeah, you know, good job studying with why. I uh, cooked. I baked um, a batch of Cornish pasties you talk on, about those a on lot, Sunday. Alex. I think we're going to I love them. To, we're going to have to ban you talking about <laughs> Cornish pasties. This is all Alex does. He just talks about his Cornish pasties all day. But exactly. I'm going to bring them in. Shares them. He never shares them with the teachers. He just I'm going to make them. some just for the teachers. <laughs> uh, we have Michaela writes, working, reading, and cooking. Wonderful, nice. Michaela. Tell us, what are you reading? What are you cooking? Um, yes. Maybe some there. British food. Yeah, exactly. Marina says, the office and um, friends is the English title. It doesn't have an article. The office and exactly. friends. You should, Just friends. Um, you should talk to our teacher, Kendra. Those are her favorite TV series. And yeah. she's also watching the office and friends in this period. Yeah, she is. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> she's not doing webinars, she's watching The Office. Exactly. Okay, guys. So today we are talking all about dun, 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 our hobbies. hobbies. Fantastic. Ooh, we even have something from Elisa. Yeah, let's have a look. Studying, studying, reading, <laughs> watching TV, and sleeping. <laughs> yeah, sleeping. Nobody meant, and nobody has mentioned sleeping yet, but. I don't know about you guys, our students, but I am sleeping a lot. I'm sleeping <laughs> nine or ten hours oh, wow. every night. Yeah, it's it's um it's very strange because I'm not doing I'm not tired during the day. I'm not doing exercise or very sure. energetic things, but yeah. I have no alarm clock and I just sleep <laughs> for ten hours every night. It's really strange. You know you're going to get everything scheduled in the morning now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Someone has to get me out of bed. <laughs> okay, so, so let's yeah, we're talking hobbies. all about hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any hobbies? Do I have any hobbies? Um, mm -hmm. Well, honestly, I don't usually have time for hobbies. Um, my hobbies are reading in my free time and also dancing and exercising. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Because you, you you danced for a long time, didn't you? Yeah, I've been dancing since I was very little, since I was four or five years old. You know, wow. I started doing classical ballet. Um, Elisa says me too. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, very I, nice. Oh, Michaela says. Uh, Michaela, uh, pride and prejudice. Hillary. I'm. Let's make it present perfect. I'm reading. Um, yeah, the title of this in English is Pride and Prejudice. Um, that's a really nice book, Michaela. And um, it's I like this book because even though it was written, it was written maybe 200 years ago, maybe something, yeah, like, about, that. something like that. And yet you can read it and you feel like it could mm. be written today. It could be something nice. that you read today. 1813. So very good. Oh, 200 you, years. You looked that up just now. Mm -hmm. 1813. <laughs> Very nice. I am equally impressed by your ability to Google things so quickly and with my ability to remember when books were written. <laughs> Gianluca as well. He says hi. Hi, 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 hi Gianluca. You. Uh, um, we also have Michaela said that she started this book, So Pride and Prejudice, two days ago, which is great. Yeah. I really imagine nice. that you are reading it in Italian. Um, 
that you will be very easy to read. You will finish it very soon. Um, yeah. Alex, what are your hobbies? So um, I do like playing competitive video games. Right. <laughs> A little. Um, and I also love photography. I've got a lot oh, of, fantastic. I, I don't know if I can show, I, maybe if we have some time later, I'll, I'll show okay. you some cameras. Um, and I play bass guitar too. Oh, wow, so many hobbies, lots of uh, things. A few. Do you, have, um, do you have a lot of time for your hobbies? Um, some days, yes, some days, no. Um, uh, usually I, I manage to have some time to do some of them. Every um, day? Obviously, like an hour or two, usually. An hour or two I, a day? I try. Wow. I that's try. Some, that's impressive. I get an hour or two a week to do my own. <laughs> but, um, no, no, I try. I try I and think, um, uh, give make time. To time. I think you very often, when you really want to dedicate yourself to something, you have to make the time for it. Exactly. Let's exactly. look at some responses. Eliza says, my hobbies, be careful of your spelling, Eliza, hobbies, <laughs> hobbies. are <laughs> running, hiking in the mountains with my big brother and cooking. I try to cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Eliza, we're learning. We will make some mistakes initially. Yeah. Um, you can do it, Eliza. You can, can do, do it. it. The important thing is to keep trying. Um, Michaela, Michaela says, says yeah. yeah. Reading and Pilates, yes, I like Pilates nice. a little as well. Um, and Gianluca and too. My hobbies are soccer. good. Make this into the gerund, Gianluca. My hobbies are playing soccer, volleyball, exactly. traveling, and you don't need the do here. Trekking, no, just, music just as trekking. a man. Okay. Trekking. Uh, very Fantastic. nice, guys. So while we're going through our focus, feel free in the comments to tell us all about your hobbies. So yep. in the focus activity, we are describing a hobby. We are looking at present perfect continuous, and we will go over for and since. Great. So we've got some questions, oh. just nice, simple ones. So what is your current hobby? Please, do you have any hobbies? Tell us everything. When did you decide to take it up? OK, um, take up. Yeah. Oh, we also have one from Robbie. Mm. My hobbies are traveling, learning English, reading, going to the gym, and I also love photography. Robbie, that's a fantastic answer. Very nice use of ing for all of your hobbies. Very Wonderful. good. No notes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us also, when did you decide to take it up? We have a phrasal verb here, take up, which means to start something, but it's a bit particular because it's only to start a hobby or a sport or an activity, okay? For example, yeah. I don't take up work in the morning. I don't take up a meeting. I don't take up a diet, but I take up a new hobby or I take up a new sport, okay? So pay, very, exactly. so pay close attention to how you use take up. Exactly. When did you um, take photography, Alex? I took up photography um, a little casually in the last year of university because I was traveling a lot and I wanted to share what I was seeing with my family and friends. Yeah. Um, I took it, I, I didn't take it up more seriously. I took it more seriously when I came to Italy and I studied at a photography school here for two years as a oh, master. Wow. As? A master. As a master's, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. That's really nice. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. When did you take up, so dancing? Exactly. When did you I, take that up? Well, I took up dancing very early. I was four or five years old. I wanted to do classical ballet, um, as all little girls do when they're five years old. So um, that's when <laughs> I started. Um, and since I was five years old, I have taken up many different types of dance. Uh, I've tried many different types of dance as well. Nice. Which one's your favorite so far? Uh, my favorite so far is contemporary. I find oh. that um, it's a lot more expressive and mm -hmm. um, it allows me to to express myself better as well. I After a while, I found that classical ballet was a bit too rigid 
for me. Okay. I'm not sure. elegant enough for it. Uh, Michaela <laughs> says shopping question mark. Um, <laughs> you know what, Michaela? I also took up shopping for a ho as a hobby for a while. Um, my bank account did not enjoy it, <laughs> and, um, and so I, gave, I took up that hobby, and then I gave up that hobby very quickly. Um, <laughs> Elisa also. Yeah. She also loves shopping. <laughs> also, I don't know if anybody else here is um, suffering a bit from not being able to go shopping. I have this problem. Like, I just really? want to go. I just want to go to Via del Independenza and spend some money sometimes. Um, and I can't do that. So um, I'm, I'm suffering. So no retail therapy. No retail therapy for me. If anybody else is also suffering like I am from not being able to just go and spend some money in a shop. Um, uh, exactly. Robbie, says, Robbie has a fantastic answer. Oh, it's but, wonderful. Thank you, Robbie. So her current hobby is watching the webinars. Thank you. Yeah, She's I'm joining every day, all day, and I'm learning yeah. so much. That's great. I decided I to take it up last week because, you know, you know. the virus. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I Very I good, Robbie. Some, you know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ravi. That's wonderful. Januka. Uh, you have a problem with Zalando. <laughs> oh my God, why do my students why do my students know so much about <laughs> and Valentina says, I have this problem. Remember your it's a positive agreement, Valentina. I have this problem, not either, but two. Okay. When we both say no, either. When we both say yes, two. Um, exactly. Thank you. I'm glad that other people feel my pain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gianluca, I came this close to downloading Zalando again last week, but uh -oh. I, I stopped myself. It sounds like you're an addict, Sophia. I'm not an addict. I'm controlling. You deleted it. the app. <laughs> I am. I did. I deleted the app. But I have this under control. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Marina also says. That her current hobby is studying art, just nice. studying art. No need mm -hmm. for the preposition. I decided to take it up two years ago. Nice. Fantastic. Nice. Do you also create art, Marina? Do you paint or draw? Let us know. Yeah, um, let us know. To our second question. I like this one. Do you yeah. tend to start a lot of hobbies but get bored quickly? Could you, what is tend to, Alex? Could we explain this? Tend to is usually. So do you yeah. usually start a lot of hobbies? Exactly. Tend to is a verb. It means do you have a habit or do you have a, um, a custom, for example, to start a lot mm. of hobbies? Exactly. Uh, Marina says no, only theory. Oh, that's that's oh, okay. really interesting, though. That's lovely. That's very interesting. Theory of art. Um, I get bored quickly of hobbies. I tend to start a hobby and in a very, very short time, will I will get bored of it. And I do the same with TV series and- uh, Oh, really? And yeah, books? I, books, no. Books, I tend to finish a book when I start one. But TV series, I very often get bored and I stop them in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. What about um, you? Do you tend to get bored easily of your hobbies? Last year, so I made a conscious decision last year to stop wasting my time with <laughs> stupid hobbies. So, for example, last year I bought with the intention, I bought this with the intention of learning cube? how, yeah, exactly, learning how to do a Rubik's Cube. Okay. I got bored of this very quickly <laughs> after spending money on this. So I said, Alex, stop, focus on what you like doing and continue, but do not waste your money and time on um, stuff that you don't want, that you'll get bored with. Yeah, you see, I am still you one year ago. I'm still in the <laughs> phase where I'm thinking, I'm going, to start, I'm going to start this hobby and then I get bored. And that is how I have. What do you have? What is it? Knitting? Amazing. So I bought these knitting needles and all this wool um, uh -huh. three years ago. I bought this three years three ago. Years this ago. is 
as far as I've gotten. This is what I've knitted in three years. You're not looking, you need to look. <laughs> this is three years worth of a knitting hobby, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Better than nothing. Uh, I guess. Oh, 10. Did you say no, we 10? said 10 to. Um, we said 10 to. Look at the second um, question, Robbie. And this hobby that I showed you here is called knitting. Maybe Alex can write yeah. this in the comments so that you can see yeah. the spelling. Knitting. 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 Very nice. Valentina Mondini says, I change hobby like every week. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like every week. Really good. It's That's difficult to, to decide. Yeah. Um, Michaela decided to practice. So I decided to practice. Yeah, if you yeah, have the preposition time. to, it's just the infinitive. infinitive. So I decided to practice Pilates last eight for twice a week. Now the course is stopped. Yeah, I can imagine. You have other hobbies too. So English in my English school since September 2018. And that's twice a week. Fantastic. That's really nice. That's really good. Hello, um, Michaela as well. Hi, I'm Michaela. Nice to see you. Okay, let's go on to our third one. Are there any activities you used to do but don't do anymore? Why did you stop? Oh, this is a sad one. It is um, a bit sad. I, um, oh, Michaela says, cooking when I'm inspired. That's fantastic. <laughs> nice. uh, do you have any hobbies, Alex, that you used to do and you stopped? Yes, and unfortunately so. In England, I used to play the drums. Mm. Um, when I moved to Italy, I had to stop playing the drums because in England I had space. So in my family home, we had a room dedicated to it. There wasn't any problems with noise. Yeah. Um, but here in Italy, I live in a flat. So I had to give up my drum kit and my yeah. parents sold it consequently. And which your is parents? Very sad. Sold they it. sold um, my drum. Yeah, so drum sad. <laughs> Um, so notice here, Alex used a, another phrasal verb, give up, which is maybe the opposite of take up. So you start a hobby yeah. and give up is to stop your hobby. Yeah. Um, I used to do art. Um, I used to draw and I used to oh. paint a lot when I was a teenager. In fact, when I was in high school, I studied uh, fine art. And um, oh, You should take I, it up again. Well, I used I. I wasn't the best in my class, but I was quite good um, at drawing, especially sketching, drawing people. I was very good at drawing nice. uh, portraits. Um, but I stopped when I was 18 and I moved to a different city, to a different country for university, mm. um, just because I, I wasn't inspired anymore. I, um, okay. I just didn't find things around me that I wanted to draw or paint, so I just stopped. No. Yeah, which was quite I understand sad. that. I had that a little with photography as well. Yeah. You bit, um, I don't know why. <laughs> Michaela. Says, yeah, I used little. to read a lot. Now I have less time, and in the evening I feel too tired to. In these days at home, I've already read three books. Michaela, that's fantastic. That's really nice. And in fact, we were saying at the beginning sentence. of the webinar that um, now that we're at home, we have a lot of time to start new hobbies, learn new things, but maybe also Definitely. very important to start doing things that we used to do in the past as well. Exactly. Rekindle and, things. Yeah. Valentina says, I used to dance, but it was so expensive. So I decided to give up dance. Um, to Valentina, to continue my study. Exactly. Nice. To continue. What kind of nice. dance do you do? I'm curious to know. Yeah, well, um, Sophia's oh, yeah. very curious about it. Um, she I loves to embroider. Mm, that's a wow. good word, uh, Marina. That is a good word. But, but she I, had to stop herself. Yeah, otherwise I can, oh, I have to stop myself. Otherwise I can sit for days and weeks at embroidery. I'm very passionate. That's um, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, just so. Uh, so you do create as well. Yeah. Just so we can explain to embroider. I showed you before my knitting. Embroider is when you have just one of these, but it's very, very small, and you make designs like this on clothes using one needle and your mm. thread. Okay. Exactly. Valentina uh, got back to you. 
Oh, that's an American. Very nice. Ballroom dancing. Very nice. And um, Robin says, I used that to. She do used to do Pilates, but she stopped because it was boring. <laughs> Which I is feel also, you. It's just also a perfectly acceptable reason to give up a hobby. Sometimes I you feel say, you. you know what? This isn't for me. This is not no, my kind exactly. of um, hobby. This was me you with yoga. You do you. Exactly. You this do was me you. With, this was me with yoga. I started yoga and then I stopped because I thought, this is boring. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like I am exercising. Valentina exactly. says, I want to know, learn how to embroider. Valentina is a fashion designer. You should learn how to embroider. Yeah, we'll she definitely I think should. That will um, definitely give you more opportunities and ideas. Crochet as well is similar. So you've got embroider, which is with one needle. Crochet, I think you have two needles and you can, um, it's a different kind of knitting. You can make um, toys um, but yeah, with I embroidering. So. You can make little dolls and models as well. Really nice. And Sophia, the last question, super important. Are you an adrenaline junkie sitting there all relaxed? Look at me. Do I look <laughs> like I have knitting needles by my side? Do I look like an extreme adrenaline? knitting? Extreme, extreme knitting. As far as I go, whilst jumping out of a plane. Um, yeah, no. Though the most extreme, I have done an extreme sport. I went Ooh. paragliding last September. Oh yeah, you um, did. Yeah, paragliding is when you have a big kite, a big tent over you, and you fly with this big material over you. Um, so I did paragliding. Maybe we can write it wow. up as well so our students can see Yes, it. I can. I did paragliding last September, but that is the most extreme sport I have ever done. Um, I think I am a um, I am a passive adrenaline junkie, probably. <laughs> um, what about you, Alex? Are you an um, adrenaline junkie? Yes, I, I like two things that I really enjoy. So I really, really like, going fast while skiing okay so with that I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie and um sometimes a little like driving here in it's junkie because people are more aggressive on the roads here in Italy mm, yeah so you, it's a bit riskier Robbie mm. says is embroider um like knitting um, almost, remember I said knitting is with two needles, okay? Yep. Knitting, you have two of these and you can make, for example, a scarf like I was trying to make. Whereas embroidery, um, with embroidery, you can make also pictures, you can make landscapes, you have one needle and you are um, ah, doing this. Maybe Marina meant, she said that she meant um, cross stitch. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm not very clear on the details on the difference between embroidery and cross stitch. I think they're very similar. Um, embroider mean, means you sew yeah, by yeah. hand some pa palettes? I Maybe. don't know what palettes are, but um, I don't yeah, know I don't know the details. Um, I just know you have one needle. All right, nice. Um, okay. Tell us if you guys are adrenaline junkies, have you done any extreme sports in your lives? We'll be curious to see if you, if we have any adrenaline junkies um, in our students, amongst our students. Uh, when, when Valentina meant. When, oh, okay. No um, worries. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Yes, got... let's see some different hobbies, some different sports. Um, Pasquale says, no, I am not an adrenaline junkie. I love too much my bed. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, but uh, Pasquale, can we bring up Pasquale's comment? Um, yes, Pasquale, we can. Put your, um, put your <laughs> um, what's it called? Your quantifier, too much. Put it at the end of your sentence. I love my bed Whoop, too much. Okay. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I love my bed too much. <laughs> I absolutely understand. What leisure means? What We're um, missing an auxiliary. 
Yeah, use your auxiliary, um, Ben. Look, I remember your quasi structure to write your uh, your question. Can you write the question again, Ben? Look, yeah. Uh, remember, you need four words: auxiliary and also an infinitive at the end. Exactly. Letter is um, leisure. I think we could use it here as a synonym for relaxing. Okay, your leisure time is your relaxing time yeah. where you're not doing anything to strong or hard or extreme you're just no it's quite passive yeah, relaxed um so we have our sports and we are going to put them in under the correct category adrenaline junkie outdoorsy leisure which we said is similar to relaxing and sports exactly um one thing as well we have so outdoors mm. and then e outdoorsy a lot of the time in English, you can add Z onto the end just to mean like or exactly. in the that type of thing. Exactly. So, you can add a Y to many words and make it into an adjective. So outdoors, outdoorsy. So something relating to being outside. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I think we can start with hunting. Shall we read through them first? And yes, I'll, I'll read the first column. Okay, sure. So, hunting, skydiving, rowing, fishing, collecting, kayaking, gardening, and bowling. Good, and I'll read the second column. Paddle boarding, bungee jumping, windsurfing, knitting, hiking, paragliding, fencing, and rock climbing. Nice. Wow. Right, so we'll put these under the categories. Let's start with hunting. So hunting is when we go usually to the forest or the mountains, we have a big gun mm -hmm. and exactly. we are killing animals as a sport. Um, <laughs> exactly. I hopefully honestly, for food. Hopefully for food. It's not usually for food though, is it? Exactly. No. Unfortunately, they go trophy, trophy hunting. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't personally see the attraction of hunting and... Um, it's not something that I would do. Um, it's not something that I agree with. But if it's something that you enjoy, everybody exactly. has their own hobby. <laughs> um, In England, we had um, a big problem. I th how long ago? 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago? With um, hunting. So fox hunting specifically. That's been a story for years, though, even before. But it, it, it was banned. Did they when ban it? When was it banned? Yeah, they banned the use of hounds. Okay, for the, most part. the use of dogs, but you're still allowed to go hunting, I think. Yeah, yeah. so you can't. You have to shoot it, and yeah. then the dogs can. It, it, it's not very nice. I think they, yeah, they they tried to make it less cruel, but they didn't really manage it. No. Um, Robbie has an answer. Hunting is outdoorsy, but probably it's only a sport. I think outdoorsy. No, no, it's outdoorsy. Yeah. Really Perfect. good. Good, Gianluca. Yeah. Yeah, so it's also a sport. Outdoorsy, outdoorsy yeah. Miguela, very good. So, yes, that's outdoorsy. Skydiving. So, yeah, in skydiving, skydiving guys, well, just to give you a picture, you're on, you're in an aeroplane, <laughs> an aeroplane, and you open the door of the aeroplane <laughs> and you jump out. <laughs> that's leisure, right? So, That's very relaxing. <laughs> Maybe you're doing it with your knitting needles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna yes, go exactly. For skydiving. Exactly. That's definitely adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Very good, right. Robbie, Valentina, Marina. Very yeah. good. Rowing. So, rowing is, well, we are in a boat for rowing and we are doing this, okay? We're using our hands to push our way <laughs> we're, we're dancing <laughs> yeah we're just, this is our rowing so what do we think this could be um have I you ever think tried rowing Alex? i have i have yeah. tried rowing in but like a few different you, lakes were you okay you're actually outside you weren't using a rowing machine i've done yeah so i've done rowing machines but then yes also outdoor outdoors in a lake very relaxing okay. Okay. nice um, I think Valentina is right. I would put rowing under a sport. It's also an Olympic sport, rowing. Yeah. Um, maybe think if you can see it in the Olympics, maybe put it under sports. Yeah. 
exactly. Let's go for fishing. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> fishing. Fishing. Michaela Adrenaline says, junkie is life, yeah. Michaela. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you live for sports. She lives for skydiving. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, fishing. Uh, I mean, it could be leisure even. It's very relaxing. Yeah. But it is outdoorsy. I'm going to agree with that, Valentina. I'm going to say outdoorsy. Let's have a look. Oh, Renzo as well. Hey, Renzo. Let's Hi, have a look. Renzo. Yeah, outdoorsy. Outdoorsy. Nice. Outdoorsy. Nice. Collecting is our next one. So when we talk about collecting, <laughs> what kinds of things can we collect? You can, we collect, can collect money. Coins. Yeah, we can collect coins from um, different countries or from different historical periods. Yeah. Also yeah. stamps. Also stamps, yeah. You can collect figurines maybe. Figurines, um, yeah. Marina says leisure, Robbie says leisure, Valentina says leisure. I'm gonna agree with all of you guys, leisure. Great job. Yeah. That's collecting, very relaxing. Then we have kayaking. <laughs> this is me I've kayaking. been kayaking we're as not, well. Me too. So we're not rowing, we are kayaking. Exactly. Um, so kayaking, that's outdoors, right? But can we find it in the Olympics? Is it a sports? I'm not sure if I'd put it under sports or outdoors. People it's in saying, the Olympics. Is it in the Olympics? Well, mm -hmm. then maybe it's a sport. You need to watch it. It's real extreme. Really extreme. Yeah, kayak. yeah. Marina says sports. Robbie says sports. Valentina says sports. It's outdoorsy. Under kayak, under outdoorsy. But it can be both. It's a sport as well, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, don't take these categories as being very rigid, okay? They're just no, they're very flexible. Next How about gardening? Gardening could be outdoors. Relaxing. You know, outdoors for gardening, right? But it's slow, relaxing, it's usually at home. Yeah, shall we say leisure? Should yeah, be leisure. let's try leisure. Yeah, there we go. Oh, good uh, job, um, Marina. Uh, Lisa, did you say adrenaline for gardening? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think it was for kayaking. <laughs> uh, okay, because I mean, like, I mean, sometimes it's tense. Like, you don't know what's going to happen to. If those you get flowers. a bee or something, a wasp. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Like those are tense <laughs> moments. Gardening is dangerous. <laughs> Have you seen the tools that they use? Those are sharp. Yeah, they're very sharp. Right, bowling. Um. For bowling, huh. is it a sport? Technically, it is. Technically, it's a sport. Is it more but of a it's game? Quite... No. I'm going to go for leisure for bowling. I would say leisure as well. It's yeah. low impact. You can low eat impact. as well at the same time. You can have some drinks. Very yeah. good. Leisure. Okay. Paddle boarding. I would say outdoorsy. You're outdoors, but it's not really adrenaline junkie. You're not jumping out of the sky. No, again, it's low impact, quite yeah. slow, relaxing, maybe at the beach. Yeah. Oh, but that, <laughs> that's a sport. <laughs> oh, well, I think kayaking and paddle boarding should be flipped. We're just doing, we're doing <laughs> our best, Alex, here. We're trying. Bungee yeah. jumping. I'm going to go with an adrenaline junkie. Again, you're not jumping out of a plane, but you're jumping off of a bridge, off of a tall building. You're always jumping off into the abyss. Aliza says bowling is outdoorsy. Oh, we oh, do have bowls. I don't know if that's what it's referring to, though. I think it's no, referring to it should bowling, be bowling or, inside. In a mall or something. Yeah. So we'll go for extreme uh, adrenaline junkie for bungee jumping. Yeah. Windsurfing. I'm going to say sport. I would say sport too. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Um, knitting. <laughs> Adrenaline junkie, clearly. Yeah, well, I mean, these are sharp. Like, <laughs> look at this. That's a sharp point right there. But let's go for <laughs> leisure. I think that's leisure. I did have um, uh, an acquaintance, not a friend, that did extreme ironing. Essentially, what they did was they took an iron, an iron and an ironing board with some ironing clothes. Ironing guys is for clothes like this, yes? Exactly. Um, and they took it to the top of a mountain and then they ironed. So they posed and they started ironing. <laughs> I think you could extreme anything by putting it on top of an iron. Basically, uh, basic. Anyway, shall we get through these um, 
let's get through yes. the rest of these. Hiking. So we can also do some since and for. We've got hiking, which I'm going to say is outdoorsy. Yep. Paragliding. Paragliding. Let's say adrenaline junkie. Again, you're jumping off something. Exactly. Anywhere you're jumping off something, we'll just put it adrenaline. Fencing, for those of you who don't know, is <laughs> on guard. When you have Sports, exactly, and you're trying to hit the other person. I'd yeah, say with sports. a sword. That's a sport for sure. Yeah. And we'll finish with rock climbing. Again, I'd say adrenaline junkie. Hopefully you're not falling off anything. Yeah, exactly. This time. Right. Okay, good. Let us know if there's any new vocabulary here, anything that wasn't clear, any um, sports or hobbies that you didn't understand, you'd like us to explain again. And let's look at some since and for. Yeah. So let's. we've got um, a text about a hobby. We're going to fill in the blanks with for, since, or the present perfect tense. Shall we read it first, Alex, just ignoring the gaps? Yep. Okay. I have been running blank three years. I usually train with my friend. We mm. 10 half marathons and one marathon Mm. We started. Thank you, Sophia. I'm just doing the blanks. Now <laughs> we are training for our second marathon. I feel that I, mm, mm. <laughs> with my training. I don't like to run alone, but my friend, mm, time to train with me recently. Mm. My aspiration is to finish in under five hours, but I am afraid I won't reach my goal. Nice. So, so um, let's, shall we go over first for and since? Yep. Yeah, so, so just to go on. For is for a period of time. A duration, exactly. Exactly. So, for example, you, Sophia, have lived in Bologna for four years. Exactly. Uh, but since we use for a specific time in the past. So Alex has lived in Bologna since 2015. Fantastic. Yeah. I <laughs> Quick <listened>. math. <laughs> I listened. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, we arrived at the same time. You arrived just two months before me. Yeah. You yeah, arrived in July 2015. I arrived in September. So I missed. Whoa, what a memory. I missed this hottest summer in Bologna's in Bologna history. It was um, the worst. So everybody, yes, everybody's saying um, four, four, four for the first one, and you're all correct. Four, three. Good, years. Michaela, as well. Yes, those are the adrenaline junkie ones. Yeah. So yes, uh, good job, four. Nice. Let's uh, then we're going to make a present perfect. I usually train with my friend. We have. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Run is very irregular. It's very yeah. strange. Run is a weird one. Mm. Even for us thinking about it, it's strange. Yeah, I always confuse this one. So what do we think for the second gap? What will we, will we put? So definitely have. Yeah, present perfect. Way. Have run. Marina good says job. have run. Well done, guys. Yes, Very run good. is a strange verb because it's run, ran in the past, and then it goes back to run in the past participle. Run, ran, run. Um, so always Very have strange. To pay attention. Um, and then we've got another gap. We started. Marina's got it. She says since we started. Very nice. Great job. Since we started. So since is from a specific point in time in the past. Exactly. Now, oh, wow. Elisa's, we are training for, uh, I feel that. What is that for? Um, oh, we have been running 10 half marathons and one marathon. Not uh, quite. So that's the. Go on. That's the present perfect continuous, yeah. but we wouldn't use that. Yeah, we don't need to use present perfect continuous here. We're only using present perfect simple in this case. Your grammar exactly. is correct, Elisa, but um, we wouldn't say we have been running um, since we started. We have been running is a lot more immediate. Um, so maybe, for example, you see me and I'm I'm panting, I'm out of breath, and you say, mm -hmm. what's, what's wrong? What happened? And you say, exactly. and I would respond, I have been running so it's something that happened very recently, recently. very immediately yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Uh, mm. Let's look at the next one, number four. I feel that I, our verb is struggle. Yeah, struggle is to find something difficult. Yeah. So we need to change so, struggle into the present perfect. Struggle is regular, okay, which is a good thing. Thank good, God. Yeah. <laughs> We've got no straggle or struggling or <laughs> what else could we say? Fantastic. Jennifer, nice job. Renzo, nice job. Very Jennifer. good. Have Very sweet. good. Um, Great job. I don't like to run alone, but my friend, here we go. We're going to use a negative and mm -hmm. our main verb is have. So we're going to use the verb have twice in two different ways. Let's try to complete exactly. this. One. I think Michaela is um, lagging or something. Possibly. But yes, Unless leisure. Unless are coming through now. Good job, Michaela. Good job. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mikel. I think your messages are coming through with a delay because we're getting them only now. Exactly. Um, uh, anybody got it? Here we go. Fantastic. Oh, be careful, guys. It's my friend. It's third person. It's he or she. Yeah, so third person. Both. Um, you both made the same mistake. All three of you, actually made the same mistake. Let's dun, make dun, dun, dun. He or she. What do we use for have for in the third person? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Nice. Yeah. There we it. go. Yes. And yes, so has. Very good. Yes, Gianluca's got it. Marina's Again, careful, Elisa. Hasn't had. Hasn't had for third person. Third person. Fantastic. Great. Nice job, guys. Very good. So, so we've already talked about number one. Yes, for and since. For, for a duration, since, for a specific point. But how about synonyms for challenge and goal? I imagine sure. in the text. Possibly. Um, I don't know if they're in the text. Some synonyms for challenge. What do we think? And some synonyms for, let's start with challenge. Maybe um, I'm trying to maybe aspiration. Aspiration, I think, would be more for goal, though. Yeah, for goal, I would say aspiration. For challenge, maybe mm. maybe struggle. But here, struggle is a verb. Ah, uh, yeah. So it, yeah. Hmm. It okay. could be though. Is there effort in the in the text because maybe effort could be a synonym for challenge. I can't see effort. No, I can't see it. But maybe either. struggle and aspiration are. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between present perfect, simple and continuous? Well, um, <laughs> I don't know if we can describe it. Uh, Marina says task, a synonym for a challenge, a task. Yeah, it could be, depending on it could be, what yeah. the task is like. The task could be simple, but it could also be more difficult, so it could be a challenge. Um, I think it's with present perfect continuous, it's difficult to talk about the difference between the two. It's better to talk about the particular ways we use present perfect continuous. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the example I gave earlier about I'm out of breath and I say, I have been, I've been running, okay? You're mm -hmm. talking about something that's very immediate, very recent, and you still have the physical effects, the visual effect of what you have been doing. Exactly. Andrea Fuda says, aim for aim goal. For goal. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's nice. a good one. Um, um, we also have like two different focuses with the present perfect and present perfect continuous. Mm, exactly. So the present perfect is more focused on the result of an action. Exactly. So what you finished, what you've managed to do. Um, fact, whereas the present perfect continuous is about the action exactly. that you're doing. In fact, if we look at the second sentence, um, the third sentence, we have run 10 half marathons and one marathon. So these are complete exactly. actions. These are, this is They're the result. Finished of their training exactly but in the example that Sophia gave we're curious it's why is Sophia out of breath why is she 
breathing like that. Right. I have been running. That is the action. We're focused on why. Exactly. Um, and we have one final question. I think this might be our final one. What are the challenges and aspirations you have had since starting your hobby? I think this is probably going to be our final uh, question for you before we finish. Exactly. Think yeah. about it, guys. Um, what are your goals? Especially now, you've got a lot of time. Think of what you want to do in the next um, year. Yeah, what aims, what time. goals you would like to reach. Exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's all the time yeah, that we yeah, have. Lesson. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank and, you. Thank um, you. We'll see you all again soon. Thanks very much. Yeah. See you all Bye. soon. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank Bye. you, Chinsia. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good job, Elisa, as well.